For the first time in the history of aviation, this drone, high-performance drone, was flown by an AI agent. Artificial intelligence has arrived. Just like the rest of us, militaries are only beginning to understand its potential as they prepare for a battlefield of the future. The AI algorithms will need to be shared more broadly, but most particularly, uh, data will need to be shared between friends, between allies, at a volume and at a pace uh, that is far greater than we've seen previously. Interoperability, a buzzword for military allies working in harmony, is difficult enough already. I personally think we're horrible at interoperability. Talk about all the exercises and operations we do together. But you did not see the front end work of three months or six months that went into that so that we could have some basic communication. So how do nations share data and introduce AI quickly without adding another language barrier? We are a UK-based deep tech company and we're focused on building the software and AI to connect up the battlefield. There's commercial complexity, there's technical complexity. Sharing an algorithm in itself is not technically complex. Uh, it is as simple as sharing any other form of, of, of file. The, the hard bit is uh, making sure that that algorithm is going to be deployed in a way that you uh, are comfortable with, that, and as, as per your agreement with the person you're sharing it with, that it can then be and placed on a platform or in whatever setting it needs to be placed in uh, such that it works effectively. Uh, because the algorithm itself isn't going to do you much good unless you've got data then flowing through that algorithm, flowing from sensors that sit on planes or on ships or Similar. AI could soak up information to speed up decision making in a crisis or anticipate what stocks would run dry in the opening weeks of a war or where a vehicle will need repairing down the line. To help the models learn, you need combat data and lots of it. Sometimes that involves careful and selective declassification of data. And then you've got to make sure that uh, if, you, if there's industrial partners involved, that they can, you know, they can share that stuff confidently without uh, fear that it's going to be, you know, for instance, copied by competitors and all this sort of thing. Our adversaries have an advantage because they are, they're homogeneous. You know, China is, is China and China's industry is largely government owned. And so there is a, a there is a very porous relationship between um, their industrial data providers, their military data providers. That gives them, in some sense, a data advantage. So the aircraft knew it was going to hit the ground and at the last possible second, it would take control away from the pilot and avoid that collision with the ground and then give control back to the pilot. It has saved 12 pilots and 11 aircraft from ground collisions. AI is already playing a role in defense, but learning to share could unlock the potential of military partnerships. AUKUS, a defense pact between the UK, the US and Australia, has already developed a trilateral algorithm to share intelligence from sonar boys launched by submarine hunters between the three nations. Dynamic targeting in particular on the uh, future combat air system, both in the program which is led by France and Germany, as well as in the uh, UK context. I know that that has been a fairly long and arduous process when it came to the development of a joint AI architecture for, for, the, for the next generation platform, but now we're there, so there's probably going to be some differences uh, between different member states using the platform. But essentially, it's based on a, on a shared architecture. Data sharing offers new challenges within alliances. Since Turkey's purchase of a Russian air defense platform, NATO has removed the country from the F-35 program over fears sensitive data on the jets could be sent straight to Moscow through the missile system. Now, we're just scratching the surface with that example in terms of the implications for how you bring together an interface and interconnect different uh, pieces of inventory into a battle network. We cannot really wonder or worry about different applications and different pieces of inventory from untrusted sources being plugged and played into that battle network. Artificial intelligence is at the start of its journey. Thanks to its use in defense, that may well have become a race. Tom Sables, Forces News. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.